in the previous video we read about the difficulties faced by vivekanand on his way to the us and the non cooperative attitude towards the colored people made him helpless he had nowhere to go and no one to help his contacts in madras also could not do much the religious societies were not willing to support him with a sudden turn of fate he was supported by a lady in the train who introduced him to professor j h right and finally vivekanand got the letter of recommendation and a ticket to chicago vivekanand returned to chicago the train arrived late and the dazed young man who had lost the address of the committee did not know where to go nobody would deign to inform a colored man he saw a big empty box in a corner of the station and slept in it in the morning he went to discover the way begging from door to door as a sanyasi but he was in a city that knows penurge like a thousand and one ways of making money except one the way of saint francis the vagrancy of god he was rudely dismissed from some of the houses at others he was insulted by the servants at still others the door was slammed in his face after having wandered for a long time he sat down exhausted in the street vivekanand came back to chicago for the parliament of religions just when it seemed things were now turning in his favor he realized he had lost the paper on which the address of the committee was written the committee which was to take care of his lodging and entry into the parliament of religions he was completely lost he had no address to go no contacts to tap again for help no one helped colored people on the station he spotted a huge empty box he slept in it the next morning he started a new he had to find the way like a sanyasi he went from door to door knocking for help but 
it was all in vain. The writer says, like Penurge, a fictional character who was an extremely crafty knave, but a coward at the same time, who would follow others blindly to his own doom, like the story of the sheep that fell into the sea. He compares the people of the U.S. to Penarch, who blindly followed the crafty means to make easy money, to make material progress, but ignored the one and only teaching worth following, the teaching of St. Francis for the evolution of the soul. People slammed their doors on his face when he knocked their doors for help. Some used abusive language. Not a single one was kind and polite. Leave alone, help. He felt exhausted by walking for long hours and at last sat down on the street. He was remarked from a window opposite and asked whether he were not a delegate to the Parliament of Religions. He was invited in and once more Fate found for him one who was later numbered among his most faithful American followers. When he was, when he had rested, he was taken to the parliament. There he was gladly accepted as a delegate and found himself lodged with the other oriental delegates to the parliament. From the window opposite to where he was sitting on the street, someone asked him if he was a delegate to the parliament of religions. Most surprised and at the same time thankful to God, Vivekanand nodded. He was let into the house by a man who was to become his most notable lifelong American follower. He treated him very well. After taking adequate rest in his house, he took Vivekanand to the parliament. There he was willingly accepted and proper lodging was provided to him with other Asian delegates. His adventurous journey, which had almost ended disastrously, brought him on this occasion into port but not for rest. Action called him, for now that fate had done its worst, it had to give place to resolution. The unknown of yesterday, the beggar, the man despised for his color by a mob, wherein the dregs of more than half a dozen of the peoples of the world meet at the first glance was to impose his sovereign genius. A new chapter in his life was about to begin and it needed renewed energy. The worst that could have happened did happen 
and now it was a past fate had something far more challenging in store for vivekanand now was the time for commitment the unknown mendicant asking for arms from door to door and looked down upon because he was not white a man judged wrongly because he did not belong to their race now was the time where the men of all religions from all over the world had congregated to make an indelible mark on the minds of these people as a man of unbeatable genius to show to the world the richness of hinduism with scientific inquiry and logical reasoning